Welcome back to Selena's Table and our little Aussie homestead. I'm Selena, if you're new, welcome. Today we're gonna to do something a little different. We're going to have a crack at making soap. And I have decided I'm gonna make it orange. So I'm gonna use some of my dehydrated oranges that we did together a few videos back. And I'm also going to grab some dried lemon myrtle and I'm gonna sprinkle that through it as well. So I'm thinking, uh, this recipe is going to have some like powdered orange rind through it as a bit of an exfoliator, some decorative orange on top, and just a sprinkle of lemon myrtle as well. So in order to make the lemon myrtle sprinklable, I'm going to need to grind it up. But we're only going to need like a tablespoon, so I'm just going to use my mortar and pestle and everything else is ready to go. So I made my very first bar of soap the other week and it was a Jan Berry or the Nerdy Farm Wife. I'll link her below. Anyway, it was her recipe that's off her website. So I will link that. I'm also going to purchase her book. I wanted to test her recipe first to see if this is something I like. And I loved it. It was so fun to do. I feel like I can get really creative by making my own soaps. And I know what's in it. It's really pure ingredients. So I'm going to buy her book and give a lot of other recipes a try. And I'll bring you along for that journey. But today, I want to make another one. Now what I've got currently is some beef fat rendering down to tallow. I have all intentions of doing this video with my homegrown tallow. Uh but I'm too impatient. <laughs> so I'm going to do it with coconut oil and olive oil, exactly the same as her recipe. The one on her website is for a honey oat. So this was my first attempt at a honey oat and I put calendula in it as well. It had no fragrance. It has a really natural oaty smell. It's beautiful. You can smell the honey, you can smell the oat. It's got only little tiny pieces in it. This is just gonna be fabulous, I can tell already. Now, I'm not a professional soap maker and this is legit my first attempt at it. And I think this different color may be called gel phase. Now, I'm still learning, so come along with me, learn with me. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, yeah, so this one is currently curing. It takes four to six weeks. I'm going to give it six and yeah, so there we go. So this second batch that I make today, it'll be ready a couple of weeks after this one, this particular honey oat calendula was a combination of olive oil and lard. Now the one I'm going to do today will be a combination of olive oil and coconut oil, just like in her recipe. Um, yeah, so supply, some supplies that you will need are some kind of soap mold. Okay, now I reckon you could use a loaf pan if it had a silicon liner or if you could use some baking paper. If you were wanting to give this a try for the first time, you didn't want to invest in an actual soap mold, that's what I would use. This is a soap mold, so that's a silicon liner inside a timber box. Okay, and I'm just making sure it fits on the sides well. All right, some other things you're going to need. I suggest you use a written recipe and you print it out or use her book um, because I did start doing this and looking at my phone and trying to do it all together and I ended up just, it was, it was a disaster. So just print out your recipe if you use her one on her website otherwise get the book in physical form okay you don't want to have to be trying to adjust settings and things when you're actually in the middle of making your soap safety is a really important factor these are chemical safe gloves they were just in the dishwashing aisle at like Coles but they were chemical resistant okay so i'm using those i've got a specific bucket this one is just for my soap making this little 
smaller one is also now just for soap making as you can see I have started writing poison lie not for food so everything I use for my soap is purely for my soap now it's dedicated soap equipment so that's my little measuring cup that I measure my lye or caustic soda. This is just a little measure cup. I've got a thermometer that now belongs to my soap making. And this one was for the water, but because we mix the lye and the water together in this, this is now just for soap. That one is the one I put my oils in and it is stained. That's from its previous use. So don't worry, that's just a stain in the, in the plastic. And apart from that, I also have a cloth dedicated to covering my soap. This is a stick mixer that I bought just for soap making and it's just a Kmart one. It was $12, so that's now my soap making stick mixer. I also have some ingredients in here. I'm keeping all of this in a paper bag. I will eventually get a container for this but it's going in a paper bag and it lives in my laundry in a safe place. So everything is together. The other thing you're going to need is some kind of stirring equipment. So I've just got some timber wooden spoons because I can throw them out. And then I've also got my essential oils because this particular one I'm going to fragrance with orange essential oil. Okay, so I've got that. I've got some orange powder and my orange oil so we're going to do this outside but i wanted to show you all my equipment first what i have and the other thing is you want to be wearing long sleeves so i'm going to put my long sleeves on i'm going to grab my glasses so that we can take this outside you need to protect your eyes and you need to protect your arms um i can't find my safety glasses so i'll be wearing sunglasses but if you can use safety glasses that would be ideal so as I said, I've only made soap once before. And what I'm going to do is measure out things that are safe to measure out in here before we move outside. I've got all my equipment there. The ingredients, I've got my recipe here. And like I said, I've only made it once, so bear with me. I'm also learning when it comes to soap. My mold is ready to go outside with us. I want to prepare little bits and pieces so this calls for the particular recipe i'm using is jan berries oatmeal and honey soap recipe okay but i'm not going to use oatmeal and i'm not going to use honey this particular time i am going to use orange powder in place of the oatmeal i'm going to use maybe i will use honey i don't know i haven't decided I'm going to use a fragrance oil and I'm going to probably use all of that. That's lavender. We don't want lavender. Orange. We want the orange one. So that's going to be ready. I've got orange powder. So I'm going to measure out. This asked for half a tablespoon of finely ground oats. So we're not going to do that today. Instead, we're going to use orange powder which smells delicious. So I'm just going to scoop my orange powder, which is already pre-ground, into a small container. So that's going to come out with us in place of oats. I want to sprinkle on top of this soap some lemon myrtle, just like I did put some calendula on the top of that one. So I'm going to grab some lemon myrtle. Now I grew this lemon myrtle. We have this tree growing in our backyard and that's why I thought, why not use it? So I've just got a few leaves in my mortar and pestle. And I'm just going to crush them up as best I can. I feel like a bit rustic is good when it comes to these sort of soaps. You want them to have that, yeah, rustic, you know, old world sort of feel. Now as I'm doing this, it's releasing the lemon myrtle oil and I can smell it and it is delicious and I love it. Now apparently citrus soaps, they don't hold their fragrance particularly well. So this is a real experiment for me. All right, now I'm happy with that. We've got some rougher bits on top. 
There we go. Okay, so that I'm just going to put into another little container. Actually, I might top it on a plate because this is the finishing product that I'm going to use. And I want to get some of these oranges. Now, I got 10 bars of soap out of my last batch. Same mold, so I'll get 10 bars of soap out of this one. So I want to take out five oranges, dehydrated oranges, and I'm going to cut them in half. Just like this. And these will sit. Okay, if they don't cut nicely, I will do another one. Because I want this soap to be pretty. Perfect. Okay, so this is my finishing plate. So that's what I'm going to use at the very, very, very end. Okay, so all those little bits and pieces are done. The other ingredients you need are your oils. Now I'm going to use olive oil. Olive oil and coconut oil. The coconut oil will require melting. So what I'm going to do is measure those out while I'm in the kitchen. We aren't working with anything dangerous yet. So I'm happy to just do this inside before we take it outside. I like things to be pre-measured before I cook, especially with things that might be time sensitive or dangerous like soap, there is a component that can be dangerous, okay? Don't be afraid of making it, just be aware to be safe. So, I will measure out my oils and they are needing a digital scale as well. All right, I will measure my oil directly into the container it's going to need to be in. This is precise, you need to be precise, okay? Don't guess, don't use cup measures and things like that. We are using grams and this particular one, our olive oil is 638 grams, according to this recipe. So that's my olive oil. To the olive oil, we will end up mixing coconut oil and lard was in that particular one. So to a measuring cup here, I am going to add my 213 grams of coconut oil. And this is soft, so that's good. end up going in the microwave to get melted down all right but we'll do that after we have started actually I'll do that now so that I can take it outside before I put my gloves and things like that on anything else we can measure outside so we're going to take outside the digital scales all of the equipment and then I'll meet you out there and show you what we do from here we're outside and Hopefully the audio is going to behave itself for me. It might look like a lot, but it's just that we're going to pre-measure everything before we actually start the process. Okay, so but the first things first, we are going to put our sleeves on because we're about to start measuring things that we want to be measuring outside instead of inside. All right, so we are going to suit up 
buttons done up on my long sleeve shirt. I'm going to put my safety glasses on and then we will start working on measuring distilled water and the caustic soda or lye. Okay, I'm just going to double check. I've got everything written down here. I did end up going with honey as well. So with the honey, it was one teaspoon of honey and one teaspoon of warm water. And that's just been mixed together so that it's a nice runny sort of consistency. Okay, now I need my glasses. There we go. I'll put them on my eyes, don't worry distilled water I might actually measure that first so that's going to go into this container so this container we will put the lye in with the water so it needs to be big enough to hold both and it needs to be able to handle some heat okay this is going to get warm this particular container can and I've got a measuring spoon ready to go or a, a little wooden spoon okay, so in here we need 255 grams of distilled water. distilled water set that to the side now we will be measuring our lye into its own little container so that one's going to go there and this is just caustic soda which of course I can't open there we go okay that's ready to be measured gloves on Tuck your shirt in to your glove. All right. If something happens, if you do end up getting burnt by the caustic soda, you need to wash it straight away, your affected area. Of course, I will get an itchy face as soon as I put these gloves on because that's just how it works. Okay, and I'm tucking in like so. We are tucked in, yes, there is a little bit there. Not the best shirt. Okay, glasses on, and then we'll measure out our caustic soda. And for that, We need our scales to read zero and we will need a hundred and eighteen grams. The reason I'm doing this outside is because it's going to create fumes that are quite poisonous once these things are mixed together. If you do it inside, you need to have good ventilation. Now, this is what this little cup's for. That's just to hold my spoon. So I'm going to put the lid back on this and that was in a little bag which has probably flown away. There it is. And I'm going to put that straight away back in my bag there. All right. Now everything's been measured so I don't need my scales anymore. So I'm just going to set them aside. And of course my face is now itchy. All right, 
First thing we need to do is we're going to mix our lye with our water. Okay, so into our water, we just sprinkle in the caustic soda. Try not to breathe in any fumes. Grab your little spoon, make sure you get it all. And give that a stir. You want to dissolve all of this really well. Once your solution is completely dissolved, like this, we're just going to set this aside to cool because you can feel this is actually really warm. So there is a breeze, which is great. So that's going to sit over there. I'm going to put my little spoon into a container. Now, what we want to do is, now is when you would work with your oils, okay? So we've melted our coconut oil and we are just going to combine the coconut oil with our olive oil into the olive oil container. Which it doesn't look any different, they're just in there together now. We're going to get another spoon. If you want to use spatulas and things like that, you can. You'll just need to keep them only for soap making. We're just going to mix these together. So now we're just waiting for our oil and our lye mixture to be roughly the same temperature. Now, that's what the thermometer is for. The oils won't be nearly as warm as the lye mixture. It didn't take too long, maybe 10 minutes to come down to temperature the other time I made this soap. But just to give you a rough guide, we're looking at currently the oil sitting at 28 degrees. The lye will be much warmer. It's about 82 degrees. So we're just going to wait. Once that comes down, it needs to be below 46 degrees Celsius somewhere. Um, I'll double check what the temperature needs to be. So we want to be somewhere between 32 and 46 degrees Celsius before we start mixing the lye solution with our oils. Okay, we're at 46 now. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour the lye solution carefully into the oil solution and then we're going to give it a mix with our little wooden spoon and then we'll use our immersion blender or our stick blender. And what we're going to do is we're going to periodically do some blitzing with the stick blender and some just mixing. Uh, you don't want to run the stick blender continually. That's what the instructions say. So that's what we will do. And at the moment, that's where we're at. So I will start doing that now. Just need to make sure my power cord will reach. Okay. Safety goggles back on. And we have our spoon. 
spoon here. So we're just going to pour that in. And start stirring. Now when you're using a stick blender you don't want to splash okay you don't want to create bubbles so just release it sideways a little bit to get rid of any air bubbles So I'm starting to feel that this is getting thicker and what we're looking for is a thickness level that when it's called trace but when you pour it over itself you can see it left behind. Now we are almost there. <laughs> I'm thinking like a cream, thin cream, but when you draw on top of itself, you can see it left behind. Now if you can see that, when I mix it, when I do that, can you see we are almost there. thin custard. Alright, now can you see that? Now I think we're there. So
Now, what we are going to do is we're going to add those mix-ins. So if this was the honey oat one, now is when you would add your honey and your oat. And now is also when you add your fragrance oil. So I'm gonna add 20 mils of that orange oil simply because it's quite mild and it may not even come through. I'm going to add the orange powder and the honey. The honey makes it warm up pretty quickly because of all the sugars. And the orange powder I'm thinking will have the same effect. So it'll be interesting to see what color this ends up being. And with the lemon myrtle leaves, the crushed up leaves, I'm just gonna put a few through it, but keep majority of those leaves for the top, okay? But you can see how this is like a thin custard now. That's the sort of texture we're going for. And every time I stir it, instead of just blitzing it, it sort of pops some of those air bubbles. We don't want soap that's full of air bubbles and we will give it a tap. But yeah, that's where we're at. So we're gonna add all of those bits and pieces, give it a quick blitz and a stir, and then we're ready to pour it into our mold. This is why we pre-measured everything. So there's the orange powder. And the honey going in with the water. And I will add just a handful of the lemon myrtle. Safety glasses on. Give that another. I forgot the orange oil, so I'm going to pop that in now too. So these little jars are 10 mils each. And hopefully we don't have a problem because we've added them. wanting to make sure I incorporate all of those oils. Okay. I'm just going to use my spoon. You can see this is thick because we are leaving behind like custard. Definitely not custard, don't eat it. Now, we are simply going to pour this into our mold. So make sure your mold is um, up against the edges. I noticed when I made my first soap, it wasn't, and I had to try and adjust it. And we are just going to pour that in, like so. And using my spoon again, I'm just going to scrape. Not that one, this one. Now what I want to do, oh, losing some there. Just make sure that's good mixed. I'm going to tap out the bubbles. 
like you would a cake if you wanted to get the air bubbles out. And you can see my mold has come away from the timber. So I'm just going to pull that back like so, because we want this to have a nice even square sides. Now that needs to set up a bit before I can put my other bits and pieces in it. So what I'm going to do is just wrap this in its towel because that's the next step. I'm going to clean up my bits and pieces and how I do that is I actually wash them outside with the hose um, because I don't want to bring that into the kitchen and then we will check on our soap and see if it's getting too warm. If it gets too warm we can pop it in the fridge. I'm not sure what too warm looks like actually when it comes to soap making so we'll just see and we want that top to thicken up a bit so we can put some swirls in there that's this is what i'm thinking and put our little slices of orange i think if we tried to put our orange in it now they would probably sink and that would destroy the look that we're going for so i'm going to tidy up this wrap up my soap in a cloth there's an old tea towel here. It's a bit stained and a bit worse for wear, so it's perfect now for my soap. So I am just wrapping that up like so. I'm going to leave that be while I tidy up, and when I come back from cleaning up, I will see if we're ready to add our little toppings. Okay, now what you can see is that I have done a little dent. And that's because this has set for probably five to ten minutes and it's now thick enough for me to do some swirls. So what I'm going to do is do some swirls just like so, just to the top. To give it that artesian look that you get with the homemade soaps okay just like that and then using our bits and pieces and I mean we're looking at like an inch so we are just gonna set our little pieces of orange So we've got 10, I mean I'm guessing how far apart these are, they may be not quite perfect. And then using some of this lemon myrtle flakes, I guess, we're just going to sprinkle. I probably should have done that first. Making sure I sort of get, you know, the back of the soap as well, because that will be a piece there. There we go. So what I need to do now is put my little towel back over the top and just let this set overnight about the same time tomorrow. I'll come in and I'll unmold it. So I'll take it out of the wooden uh, mold and then also out of the silicon mold and I'll cut it into its individual pieces like this and then as soon as I've cut it so this will all happen tomorrow so about 12 hours later I'll cut it and then I'll set it on the rack and that will just go into my storeroom you could put it in the laundry or something that just needs to set now and sort of air cure for four to six weeks and what I will do is once these are both cured 
We'll have another video and we'll test them out and see what we like better because this one is olive and lard and this one we made today, as you know, was coconut oil and olive. So we will see which one lathers nicer and which one maybe feels better. Um, I have heard that when doing my research on soap, that sometimes the coconut based uh, soaps can be a little drying. So it will be interesting to see how they compare in feel, but either way, aren't they beautiful? And I'm excited. It does smell delicious. It smells really fragrant of citrus, which is what we want. And I'm excited to see how they turn out. So if you would like to see how my soaps turn out, if you want to be a part of this journey with me, feel free to uh, like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit that little bell because in a video to come, that's when I'll be doing the test out and see how they, how they turn out. So thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I loved making the soap and I will say this is the only second time, only the second time I've ever made it and I did find it much easier. So if you want to give it a go and that first batch feels pretty overwhelming to you, just don't give up. Try again because I, the second batch was so much simpler. I'd done it before, but yeah. I will link Jan Berry and her book and I'll also link her website down below so that you know exactly where I got this from. But there we go. I am really excited to see how this turns out. So have a great week and I'll catch you next time. Bye.